True victory, number six point. Let's read together. We can have victory over all sins with the help from God. So this point, if you remember briefly, victory over sins. Now, a lot of times people say, well, it's too hard, too hard. Uh, sins just come from every direction. It's hard to overcome sins. But uh, with this uh, five steps toward victory, uh, we, when we are aware of our sins, we can face it. And there's no problem. Actually, we can overcome any kind of sin. God has given us that resource. First, we want to see reasons why some people stay in sins. First, let's read together. Many people haven't noticed that they are sinning. Some people get emotional, get angry. They didn't know that they are sinning. Or when they hurt people, they say things that hurt people. They didn't realize it. So first thing is, many people didn't notice that. And the second, let's read. Everyone is doing the same thing. Why can't I? Other Christians are doing the same thing. They are telling lies. They are yelling at people. They are not typing. And why, why do I have to do it? And then, well... In the kingdom of God, there are many people who are just following God in a very lazy way, in a way very far away from God. Actually, if you look at all Christians in a church, you might notice 90% of the Christians are passive Christians. They just go to church. And then a few percent Christians are more committed more committed to the Lord. And then maybe 1% have a high motivation to make the best use of their life. It is a sad fact that many Christians don't see that following God is a blessing, that it will bring all kinds of blessings. When you follow God all the way, not just half the way, but all the way, then you get blessings. And people say, well, other Christians, they're doing okay. They, you know, they have a good salary. They have a good... Our uh, family, they have children, oh, it's, it looks like that's everything I want. But is it all about life? Having children, get ma getting married, having money? That's not all about our life. Our life is for the purpose of blessing people, for glorifying God and following God, and then you will be blessed by God to a high extent. I find that the joy level in my heart is higher than Rich people that I, you know, I, I, my schoolmates from my, my ex-secondary school, my second, secondary school is a famous school in Hong Kong, Queen's College, is from England. Uh, and the, my schoolmates, they, uh, they had uh, very famous jobs, they, you know, important jobs in, a, in Hong Kong. And some of them even are retired already. <laughs> I, I think when they said, you know, oh, uh, they are retired. When I heard it, I said, is it already the age? Yes, it's a fact. I have come to the age of retirement too. I mean, according to many people. But it's not retirement for me yet. I, I want to go as far as I can to the day of death. And I find that I'm still very energetic. There's no reason for me to retire. <laughs> and some of them have very good jobs, but they are not necessarily happy. They're not necessarily, you know, their life is not necessarily fulfilled. I have met some people who are very rich, but you, if you notice the news, some very rich people, when they die, what happened? Their children fight for their money. That's what happened. So instead of getting a blessed family, they get fights in the family when they die. That's the fruit of the life. The whole life fruit is fight for the money. And so, when other people do that, you know, following the world, it doesn't mean that we have to do that. Okay, the next point, some people say, let's read, no one is perfect, I can't be perfect. So that's also a line that we cannot be. Now, I, I would say, we are not 100% perfect, but what I want to encourage you to do is as soon as sinful thoughts appear in our mind, immediately take care of it in one second or a few seconds or a few minutes, not in a few months or a few weeks, get angry for a few weeks, immediately take care of our problem. We cannot be perfect totally, but we can be approaching perfection. That as soon as sins appear, we can take care of them. That's what I want to 
you know, encourage you to do today, that we are not perfect like God. We can never be perfect like God, but we can take care of our problems as soon as they appear in our mind. Okay, and then another excuse people have. Those people mistreat me first. The natural, it's natural for me to be mean to them. So, well, they yell at me. So, at least I have to, you know, uh, yell at them, or uh, at least I have to be, you know, not uh, show them an angry face. Uh, so we have to do something back. So that's that's a, a line. That if they sin, do I have to sin? No. And people sometimes have this misconcept in the mind: the one who is louder is the winner. The one who yells louder is the winner. So at least I have to yell louder, and then I'm the winner. Is that a truth? No. 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 But many people believe that. And you notice that you know, uh, in the, even in public places, you notice that sometimes people yell, yell louder and louder and longer and longer. The one who yells at, at, at other people longer is the winner, because the other people will go away. But does it mean that he wins? No, it means that people are afraid of him. So it's not really uh, winning. First, we want to believe this. Any sin is destructive. Even though you think, well, it seems there's no big consequence immediately. But look at this picture here. The couple yell at each other. And first, their mind won't have peace. The relationship would not be good. And the child would be affected for the whole lifetime. For the whole lifetime. Are you affected by your parents' quarrels and yelling? In some way. But we can want to overcome it, right? We want to, by the help of God, overcome it so that we're not affected by them. But sins have a long-lasting effect on the sinner and also on the people around them. So any sin is destructive. Even when no one notices it, when one, no one notices our sins, it's still destructive for our life. Galatians 6, 8, let's read. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. So this says very clearly. Souls to the flesh, follow the flesh, will reap destruction. And one day, these people will, you know, uh, will be very uh, sorry that they have lived a life like that. And even many Christians, they say, I wish I had followed God more closely. At the time when they die, when they, when they face God, they say, I wish I had followed God more closely. And when they die, they, they notice that following the world really doesn't bring anything good. But when we follow God, we can see so many people blessed in heaven. We can see many people blessed by us. One day when we go to heaven, I believe that all the people blessed by us will come to say thank you to you. I mean, we don't serve God for that purpose, but I'm sure that these people, you know, because that's God's rule, that there is always appreciation. These people will say, you have blessed me in this way, you have done this to me, you have brought me to Christ, you have lifted up my spiritual life, then uh, these people will come to you. And can you imagine how big a crowd it would be that you have blessed? Some people have blessed 10 people. Are you satisfied with 10 people? Do you think you can bless at least 100 or 1,000 people? I mean, you keep blessing people around you. You'll be surprised how many people you can bless. I cannot count how many people I bless. You know, it will be tens of thousands. And I will continue to bless more and more and more. And also bless them, uh, lift them up to a higher level of ministry in the Lord. And I hope that I will lift you up to a high level of ministry in the Lord. That instead of reap destruction, we'll reap eternal life and all kinds of spiritual blessings. Okay, James 2.10. Let's read. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Well, you might say, well, how come this is true? If I just break one, one, uh, one law, uh, how, how could I break the whole law? Well, for instance, we get angry with somebody. When we get angry with somebody, then it affects our spiritual life. And it affects our relationship with God. And it affects how we bless other people. It affects our strength. It takes away our strength to bless people. So it will affect every area of our life. 
whatever sin it is, it will affect us. So if we just break one point, stumbles at one point, is guilty of breaking all of it. Ephesians 4.27, let's read. And do not give the devil a foothold. Any sin will give the devil a foothold. Any, any sin, any bad relationship would give devil, the devil a chance to attack the two persons. Or any, anywhere that we stumble in a church will cause the devil to be able to attack the church. And uh, it's not worth it and to, to be affected by the devil. The devil is never, it's always greedy. The devil wants more of your lives. He wants to enter more of your lives. And some Christians did not realize it. They let, they let anger, they let frustration, they let uh, sinful actions control the whole life. I have seen uh, Christians even, even when they do good things, sometimes they have frustration and anger and it affects the whole person. I heard of one person like this. This person is very interested to help one person, but she helps the person in such a way that affects her life because she did not do it in a balanced way. It affects her life and it affects the people around her. All the people around her uh, worry about her and try to help her because she, uh, she's hurting her body. She's not doing it in a balanced way that she affects because uh, she, uh, she overdoes it. And also, she did not set boundaries. Even when, when we help people, we have to set boundaries. But this person did not set boundaries and go too far. They are, she's controlled by the person she helps. In that way, she affects her, her own health and her emotional life, and she gets frustrated because some people disagree with her. And then she gets frustrated, and these people get frustrated, and it affects the, the people around her. And uh, so even we stumbles in a small point, we can give in to the devil. And, and she get very emotional, have very strong emo uh, negative emotions. Uh, I've seen people like this, they serve God, but then the frustration or the desire to do better, that when it's too much for their own success, sometimes people want to do better in ministry, but when it's become a pressure, it affects the peace. They don't smile anymore. They always think about, I need to do better, I need to do better. It becomes a burden. We cannot bear that burden. We have to trust in God and we have to follow God and let God do His work. We just relax in God, trust in God, and be filled with the joy of the Lord and the love of God. And then when you serve, you'll be more fruitful. So do not do it with the flesh. Sometimes people serve God with the flesh. Romans 8.37, let's read. In all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. So here you see one person. here. Christ in Him. I am in Christ and Christ is in me. That when we have this relationship, we are more than conquerors. We can overcome our sins. Have you noticed when you first become a Christian, sometimes you have more desire to overcome sins. Suddenly you say, wow, I didn't realize I'm, I, I tell lies. I didn't realize that I get angry with people. And then we, we have a strong motivation to overcome sins when we first became a Christian. It happens to many Christians like that. When they first became a Christian, they, they're motivated to overcome their sins. But then as time goes on, this motivation gets lower. Why? Because they say, well, people around me are like that. Or, or, or sometimes they don't have a close relationship with the Lord. So when they first became a Christian, the Holy Spirit filled their heart. And so they are strongly motivated to love the Lord more and take care of their sins. But when time goes on, they become lazy. And then they lose the motivation. Sometimes Christians have great motivation when they are filled with the Holy Spirit. But then again, it will subside. The motivation might go down again. But we want to keep this motivation because our lives are very precious. Our lives are super, super precious. Please don't play with your cell phone at this point. With that we can, we are more than conquerors through Him who loves us. That we can be, you know, we, have, we can be conquerors. For me, I see that my life is so precious. 
that I want to do my best because in every meeting I've led, I've seen people change. Uh, when I go uh, to the mission field or when I lead meetings in, uh, in Hong Kong, I see that people's lives change. People experience the Holy Spirit. And I can see that I can go to affect more and more people. And you too, don't think that you cannot do it. You can do it too. If you start, start blessing people, you find that God will open a way uh, to you more and more. And when you see that, you say, I want to keep my life clean and holy and also full of joy so that I can bless more and more people. And I hope that will happen to you, that we will bless more and more people. But if we want to bless more people, we have to be conquerors first. We have to be overcome by the help of God to overcome our sins. And we can do it. Hallelujah. First Timothy 6, 14, let's read. To keep this command without spot or blame until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then Paul encouraged Timothy to keep this command without spot or blame. Some people think, well, I just follow most of the commandments in the Bible. I just follow most of it. But the Bible says here, Paul said here, without spot or blame, that we follow it perfectly. As I said earlier, it doesn't mean that we have no simple thoughts. Simple thoughts still appear, but we want to take care of it immediately. Sometimes, thoughts just come into our, our head, sometimes, from time to time. But the more you come close to God, the less these thoughts will come. It will come less and less frequently. And then, you can overcome it also in a very short time. Okay, and then, we cannot be totally free from sinful thoughts. Let's, let's read. Don't blame ourselves when we have sinful thoughts. Handle the thoughts immediately. So when we have sinful thoughts, uh, it, the sinful thoughts are not good, but don't take it too seriously. In a sense, don't say, oh, I've, oh, I've sinned already today. Oh, it's too bad. Don't say that. But say, I repent of my sins and God will forgive me. So when we have sinful thoughts, don't be overwhelmed by it. Don't be overwhelmed by guilt. Say, say this, this is very important. Don't be overwhelmed by guilt. Many times when Christians sin, when we sin, have you noticed this? I have noticed this myself. Sometimes when we sin, we say, oh, I feel so bad about it. Oh, I'm no good. I, oh, I've committed sins again. I, I, and then I feel guilty. And then, oh, I, I don't want to pray. I don't want to come close to God. I just feel shameful. Sometimes we feel that way, but God doesn't want us to be that way. God wants us to take care of our sins immediately. When we sin, just say, Lord, forgive me. I have met many Christians that said, well, I sin so much. I said, you know, God gave me this thought. God would say, so what? Everyone sin. I haven't seen anyone who doesn't sin. So you sin, so what? Everyone sins. The main thing is you repent. So if we sin, it's not the biggest deal. I mean, it's a big deal, but we just repent, and then God will forgive us. That's the main point. When we sin, say it together. When we sin, don't stay in guilt. Repent and ask God to forgive us. And be free. And follow God faithfully. So feel free when we are forgiven. Feel free. Feel free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Be filled with joy when we are forgiven. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't wait until we are perfect. Some people will say, well, I cannot be joyful until I'm perfect. Well, that day will come. So don't wait until we are perfect. But be joyful when we are forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay? Now, we are sensitive to us decide to sin. So the first step is we have to be sensitive. For instance, sometimes we dislike someone. Uh, maybe sometimes for some reason, sometimes without reason. Sometimes you look at someone, you look at the face, you just dislike the person. <laughs> Does God do that? No. So that dislike, in, you know, that it makes that make us hard to love that person. Or when some people talk, they talk so loudly, and you say, well, they don't have manners. And then sometimes we don't like them. And so when, sometimes people don't notice that. So we have to be sensitive. Our attitude toward people, 
do we dislike some people? Or some people, they, they are too good looking. And then we don't like them because we're jealous. They're too good looking. They, they have too much money. Wow, the big car. And person come out, wow, these people, these are rich people. I don't like these rich people. They're too rich. And then we dislike them for no reasons. Or sometimes people have bad manners and then we don't like them. So when we notice this, we say, Lord, no matter how they are, even the terrorists, when we read the news, sometimes we say, I dislike them, I hate them. We don't want to do that. We want to pray for them. Even people kill us. We want to pray for them. Lord, only your love can change them. Yes. Only your love can change them. We, we don't want to hate people. We don't want to dislike people. And then sometimes we're not aware of our anger. Uh, sometimes we, we, we just, in our heart, we just stay ang angry. And we think it's too hard to take up this anger. Sometimes people can stay angry for hours because the boss yelled at them and then they just stay angry. I don't like the boss. And then we don't take care of it. And we think it's natural, but this is not. This is not right. Or unforgiveness, that we cannot forgive someone. Or uh, uh, decide to tell a lie. I have experienced this before, and I'm sure, I think everyone has experienced this. Before we tell a lie, usually we plan a story. Have you noticed that? We plan a story. How to tell the lie, with what expression. What if the person asks you a question, how to answer? So we plan lies. And I hope that we don't plan lies anymore because God doesn't like it. You know, at the moment that, that thought comes to me, immediately I reject it. I don't want to tell lies. Our lustful thoughts, that in our heart we have unclean thoughts come to our heart. And then we, sometimes we say, well, uh, it's natural. Uh, everyone has lustful thoughts, but we want to say this will ruin our life. Or some people get on the internet, then they look at these lustful pictures, and then they say, "Well, it's it's fun, but this is not fun. This this is, you know, fun. The worldly fun it will destroy our spiritual life." Okay, now the point is, how do we overcome these problems? Uh, let's look at this five steps toward victory again. First, aware. Okay. Now we use some examples, how to be aware. And then, now, can you say these five points again? Don't, don't look at it, can you say it? Aware. Aware, and then destructive, three. Biblical concepts, four. Pray, five. Submit, okay? Now let's use some example. For instance, your boss yelled at you. And you feel, oh. Oh, I didn't do so well. And she's always so angry. And then we don't like them. Now, it, a few thoughts can come up. First, our sense of failure. Second, I'm helpless. I'm bound in a helpless situation. My boss is not a good person. I don't like the boss. So these few thoughts can come up, right? Not just one sin, but a few thoughts come up how do we handle it? We have to go to the root of every problem. For instance, you say, I'm nobody. I'm always serving other people. Oh, I have to be always, you know, uh, my boss is always over me. And my boss is always uh, angry, so I'm helpless. Sometimes we have this helpless thought. And then it affects our, our, our spiritual life and affects our mood. And then we cannot be joyful. So how do you handle it? It, it takes time sometimes, it takes time, but the more you handle it, the faster you can handle it. Uh, what you can do is just say, I'm precious in the sight of God. God has a wonderful plan in my life. Even though when my boss doesn't <coughs> like me, or my boss is not satisfied with me, or my boss gets angry easily, that's her problem. I will try to do my best next time. If I fail this time, I'll, I'll say sorry, but I'll do my best. But, and, and then uh, I don't have to be angry with myself. Everyone make mistakes. It doesn't matter if I make mistakes now. And I can rejoice in the Lord. And then, and then we can go into prayer and praise. Lord Jesus, help me. Give me joy again. 
I'm joyful not because I'm successful, not because I, I make no, no mistakes. I'm joyful because I have you. I have Lord Jesus who loves me all the time. And then keep praying until joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord comes back to our heart. Now it happens to me many times that sometimes people will say something unpleasant to me. And then I will say, okay, it's his problem. Uh, if I have done anything wrong, I'll ask for forgiveness. <clears throat> but if I haven't, then I'll say, okay, his problem. It's his problem. I don't have to be affected by them. But still inside me, I have this feeling that he doesn't like me. And I feel bad about it. And then I would say, well, he doesn't like me. It doesn't matter. I can still try to bless him. It doesn't matter if people don't like me. It's, most important thing is God likes me. So, and God likes me all the time. So I don't have to be affected by him. And I keep praying for the person and keep showing kindness to the person. The person might not show uh, uh, kindness uh, to me, but then I will keep showing kindness to the person. I will say I don't have to be affected by them. Now, and my heart might feel uncomfortable, but after a while, I'll, the joy of the Lord will come back to me. I keep praising God. Hallelujah, I don't have to be affected by them. I can be joyful. And then, I learn not to be affected by people. Um, and then the more I do it, the faster I can do it. Sometimes the emotions will come back in the middle of the night. Sometimes, you know, in the daytime I take care of it. But when I wake up in the middle of the night and then I feel bad again. And I'll say, the Lord still loves me and the Lord is with me all the time and I praise God. And I, I keep praising God whenever I'm aware that I keep praising God and then the joy of the Lord will come back to me. Now, I, I want to ask you to apply it to your life right now. Because even though it seems a simple way, but the, what stops us from using this? What stops us? Sometimes we say, oh, it's too hard. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Uh, she still likes dislike me. Uh, uh, I, I cannot do it. I have no strength. You know, we have excuses like this. Think, I, you know, the main thing is that you apply it to your life. I can tell you my story. I can tell you different stories I have. For instance, I have, I have looked at uh, last four pictures on the internet. Sometimes I did not have this high awareness to stop it right away. And then I'm affected. And then I find that guilt attacks me. And then I didn't like that. So any time now, when I see that those pictures, I immediately, I, you know, I, uh, I uh, close it, I turn away, I don't think about it, so immediately I take care of it. And then I praise God. And then uh, that way I'm not affected by it. Any time or when I'm angry with someone, that I dislike someone for what he has done, and then I'll say, it's in God's hand. Uh, even though things are not uh, according to my will, it doesn't matter. God has a way. As Jesus said to uh, Pilate, Pontius Pilate, when Pontius Pilate judged him, judged him uh, Jesus said, you know, if not for him who give you authority, you cannot do anything for, to me. So if not for God, nothing will happen. But you say, it seems that my boss is in control of many things. It seems that the, you know, the people around me, it's in control of many things, but still, God has control of our lives that these people cannot affect us. I hope that, now, can you think of things that happens to you that you find very hard to overcome? Because today, we want to think about this, how to apply it to our lives, that we can apply it so that when sinful thoughts appear, immediately, we can forgive, we can bless the person, we can put down the sin and, and say, Lord Jesus, I can have victory in you right away. Can you think of instances? Now, let me ask you this question. With the help from the Lord, is it possible when you say, okay, I have some anger now. Can you say, Lord, I don't want to have anger right now. I choose not to be angry. Is it possible? Has it happened to you? That you, at first you are angry with someone and then you say, 
I, I don't want to be angry with the person. Please help me. Can you overcome this anger in one moment? Can you, can you make up your mind to do that, okay? Now, if you can overcome it in one moment, do you think you can do it in the next moment? Yes. And then, you, can you keep doing it? Yes. The point is, if you can do it in one moment, you can keep doing it. The point is, some moments we are more down. We are more unhappy. And then you say, now I have no strength. In the church I have strength. Can you forgive your bosses for everything they've done to you now? Yes. When you are here, it's easier, right? But when you are home, when they just yell at you and make you work like a horse. <laughs> but eat like a mouse. Eat like a mouse and <laughs> work like a horse. And then you say, it's not fair. It's not fair. I noticed that many household mates, even you know, on a day off when they come home, they don't want to go up to the home. They stay downstairs. <laughs> Because the moment they go up home, they have to start working. But when they're downstairs, they want to stay until it's time to sleep. I noticed that they will stay around. Okay, so sometimes we are overwhelmed by these negative feelings. It's harder when you're in front of them, right? In a church, it's easier. But when you're there, it's harder. But if you can overcome it here, do you think you can overcome it at home? You can do it. But sometimes the motivation is low. You say, well, I just sin for one moment. I just get angry with her for a moment. Later, later. I cannot handle it now. Later. But actually, when we delay, uh, you know, delay our handling the problem, what happens is it affects our spiritual life. And then we lose the joy. But when we say, any moment and when sin attacks me, in Jesus' name, I can overcome it by the power of God. Even though, you know, think of it. Now, I, w I want to uh, say this very clearly. Now, if this, is, if this is a person who says negative things to you, this person says it, and then we can get angry with the person. But actually, it's not this person, it's Satan. So you say, Satan says this, I don't have to be affected. So, but at the same time, you look at this person, don't say, she's Satan. <laughs> she's a precious person. She is precious. And she's a person that blesses you. If not for, for her, you will not have this present job. I mean, at least it's doing you some good, right? Yes. At least it's doing you some good. So you say, okay, now the word came from Satan or from his, from the sinful nature. It doesn't matter. I don't have to be affected. When Satan talks, do we have to listen? No. no. We don't have to listen. We don't have to be affected by Satan. So next time when you hear unpleasant words, I don't have to hear it. This I don't want to keep. I don't want to keep it in my mind. I don't have to be affected by it by this word, I want to be affected by God all the time. Amen. Amen. Think about input, input in our life. What inputs do you have in your life all the time? Sometimes people have this always, the boss always say, do this, do that, hurry up, hurry up. One, one uh, Filipino said to me, she came to Hong Kong and she said, how come people are always running after the train? And, and she said, is it true that there's no more train? <laughs> How come people always run after the train? Why are people in Hong Kong always in a rush? How come her boss always say, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up? <laughs> why, why is it always need to, the, the need to hurry up? And she get pressure from that. And, and I encouraged the boss because I was talking to the boss and then the, uh, her, her maid talked to me and then I said, yes. We can all relax. And then because uh, uh, her boss is a Christian, and then I encourage her to be just to relax in the Lord. Don't have to rush all the time. So when your boss rushes you, do you have to, I mean, you can, you can work fast at the same time and not be pressured. 
I know this is hard. <laughs> I know this is hard. Think of it. Do you play? Do you have any sports? Maybe. Huh? Some. Any one of you? Sleeping. Sleeping is a sport. Eating. Oh, working. Huh? No, eating. Huh? <laughs> okay. Now think of it. I play tennis. I play ping pong. When I play tennis, I run very fast, but I'm not under pressure. I'm I'm moving very fast. Tennis is not. Like I was doing ping pong movement. Tennis, you have to pull back the the, the racket. Get ready, and then that's tennis. Ping pong is like this. Quick movement. I'm moving very fast, but I'm not under pressure. So you can be working fast at the same time. You rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. <laughs> when I prepare my sermons, one weekend I have five sermons. Not not every weekend, but one weekend I had five sermons to prepare, and I have finished none of them. <laughs> And I have to finish five, and I have little time. But I said to myself, if I give myself pressure, I won't be able to do well. So I say, and what I can do is relax the Lord and do the first one. And then when I finish, I do the second one. I cannot do put in as much time as usual, but all I can do is just finish one and then go to the second. I cannot do all five at the same time. Yes. Yes. So when you have a lot of work to do. You can only do one thing at a time, and you can do it fast, but you do it with a relaxed mind. When I prepare sermon, this is what I do: I will hum all the time. Oh, 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 hallelujah! Some of you may say, "Well, Pastor, you prepare sermon is easy. You just sit there, <laughs> and, and it's so relaxing. Uh, Pastor, your work is easy." But whatever we do, if we have a mindset of I'm enjoying God, and when I was in college, I was a janitor in the college, and uh, and uh, my supervisor said, "You are the best janitor I ever had," <laughs> because I did everything so well. And we can whatever we do, we can do it with a peaceful heart. Amen. Now. A heart without peace is also in a sinful condition, because God's plan is that we all we all live in joy and peace and love. When people don't have peace, they always say, "Oh, I'm poor. I'm miserable. I'm under pressure." We are not glorifying God. That is also a sin to take care of. That we want to rejoice in the Lord. When your boss tells you, "You have to clean up this dirty mess." And say, oh no, this dirty mess again. Oh, yesterday I did it, today again. Have to clean up for so long. Sometimes we immediately have this negative response. I have to do this again. That's a negative response. And you say, I do it to serve the Lord. I do it to serve the Lord. Doesn't matter if I have to do it. It doesn't matter. That way we take care of our our. Whatever sinful thoughts we have, so the first point is very important that we are aware of negative emotions, negative thinkings in our mind. Can you name some negative thinking or emotions in your mind sometimes that come up? Can you think of some? Because you have to be aware of it before you can handle it. Can you think of some? I hope you learn to be sensitive to the sinful thoughts. The moment you come up, uh, uh, leave this place. Actually, even now, you might have impatience. How long have I, do I have to hear this sermon? <laughs> Can I really do it, Pastor? You might be able to do it. It's too hard for me. So we might have these negative arguments inside inside our heart, and these are also sins. And I notice that even when I sometimes when I do dishes, sometimes negative emotions will come up for no reason, 
Have you noticed that? It comes up for no reason. So what I choose to do, I notice this. So what I choose to do is when I start doing anything, when I'm, uh, when I'm aware, I always praise God. When I start washing the dishes, I praise God. And then the negative emotions don't have a chance to come up. When I wake up, I praise God and love God. Lord, you're so wonderful. Hallelujah. That's the best way to fight sin is to have a, always have a close relationship with God. Always praising God and enjoying the love of God. When I am in that condition and then any sinful thoughts that comes up, I will immediately pay, I notice it and then I can take care of it. But if we, some people live like this, oh, do this, do that. And always in a being rushed and have to do this hard work, have, always have a lot of work to do and the mind is under pressure. In that condition, it's very easy to grumble, to feel negative, to feel life is hard. All these thoughts will come up. And I hope that today will encourage you that we can overcome all sins. Can you think of one sin that is hard to take care of? That you find it hard. And then we can think about how to handle it. Anyone? Anyone think of any any sin that is hard to take care of take care of? Worry. Okay. Yeah. So you worry about maybe the family, right? Um are your family members Christians? Yeah. Okay. It's natural for us to worry. Oh, how is the health? How is the schooling? How is the work? How is the marriage? Well, for Christian and non Christians, there are two that are different. For Christians, family members. The Bible has promised us if we trust in God, just now when we said the second point. When we trust in God and have a close relationship with Him and obey Him, He will bless us in all areas of our life. So what I can do is to help my family members to trust in God more, to follow God more. What if they don't follow God closely? Many Christians will worry, Oh, my children don't love God that much now. Oh, they don't have a close relationship with God. And then we get worried. If we worry, does it help? It doesn't help. So first, we, this is God's work. This is God's work. So first, I have to trust in God and have joy. And then every time when I talk with my family members, I always share how God is wonderful to me. How God is wonderful and, and that way they will get, get encouraged. And not to nag them. Sometimes we just keep nagging them. You have to read the Bible. You have to pray. You have to do this, do that. Don't do this, don't do that. And then, and then they... They don't like to hear a, a phone call. But then if we always say positive things and hear, you know, listen to them and care about them and encourage them and pray for them, they will be encouraged. That way we can lift up the spiritual life. But if we worry, then it doesn't help. For instance, we might worry about their future, their marriage and their work. But then we say, God also will take care of them. And God will bless them. So... I can, what I can do is I trust in God and pray for them and encourage them and lift up their spiritual life. So these are the positive ways to handle it. But people very often choose the negative way. The negative way is to worry. But people don't choose the positive ways. The positive way is to stay in joy and love all the time and then have confidence. God will work in their lives. God will take care of them. So, People don't choose the positive way, but choose the negative ways. But we want to say, we want to choose the positive way. To always live in the love of God and to bless them all the time. And always be joyful, caring about them. What if something bad happened to them? For instance, they have, you know, did something wrong and then we get angry. We get unhappy. It then still doesn't help. It doesn't help when we get angry or uh, we feel and happy about it. What we what can we do? What we can do is to uh, to pray for them and accept what has happened. Whatever has happened, one very important thing is to accept what has happened. So what can we do next? 
what can we do next? So we can pray to God and ask for guidance. So that's, uh, if they have, for instance, if our family members have done something wrong and they have to go to jail, <coughs> that this is a very bad scenario. But it already happened. If we worry, would they get out of jail faster? No. So we pray to God and trust in God more and then see what we can do to, to help and uh, hopefully their behavior is better and then they can get out, get out of jail sooner. That's what we can do. The more worry we have, it affects us and affects them. And sometimes also we have to let go to an extent. What, what, what do I mean? I can do all I can to help the person. But if the person refuses my help, I can do nothing. I have to let go emotionally. But I still love them and care for them. But I don't, I cannot go to sleep every day and worry, oh, what's happening now? Oh, oh I, I, he will have a you know, very uh, miserable future. If we keep worrying about uh, the situation, it doesn't help. So we have to have a peaceful mind to look at the situation and accept uh, whatever has happened and ask God for wisdom to treat uh, to take care of the problems instead of worrying. But people usually, they follow the natural instinct. Naturally, as I said earlier, when people yell at you, what's our natural response? Get angry, right? That's usually the natural response is the sinful response. So we have to be consciously choose not to be affected. Consciously choose to bless. Okay, now how about non-Christian family members? What can we do? We can keep blessing them, praying for them, and be nice to them, be kind to them, and it still continue, uh, refuses, uh, refuse to believe in Jesus. I can only accept that for now, and don't worry about it. I can, I can do nothing. I can do my best when I do my best and then I let go of the burden so the main thing is only God can carry the burden Amen. and God is responsible for all consequences yeah. all situations he's responsible for all situations what I'm responsible for is to trust in God and do what I have to do mm -hmm. after after I finish what I do I just relax and trust in God sometimes I know that in this present age for some of you who have children overseas, uh, your children might be out of control in some way. I know it's very easy for mothers to say, oh, I have no joy, I have no peace because my children, they're not behaving well, they don't follow God. That way, you also will lose the joy of the Lord. We cannot carry that burden. We can keep doing what we can do, but we have to let go of the worry but we don't let go of the responsibility we keep blessing and praying for them but you say it's too hard it's too hard not to worry it is it is very hard not to worry so we have to ask God for help at least we have to realize that is we have asked God for help so that we won't worry but some people do this they just worry oh what can I do I just feel unhappy. They stay in that condition without knowing that they are affected by this sin of worry. Some people don't notice that. They are being affected by worry. So first thing, I notice that I'm affected by my worry and so I start to handle it. That's the most important thing. Let's say it with me. First, I have to be aware of my worry. And then I got Ask God for wisdom. Ask, uh, ask God for joy. So that I can live in joy. And so that I can do my best for the person. Instead of worrying. Do you get my points? That when you are worrying and you analyze it, well, there's no help to worry. It doesn't help. It doesn't help me. It doesn't help the person. So what can I do? Come to God. God will help me. All ye who are weary and burdened, come to me and I'll give you rest. Hallelujah. 
Let's rise and pray to the Lord. And ask God to help us to repent of our sins. Whatever we haven't paid attention to, our sins that has stayed with us for so long, sometimes we don't pay attention to our sins. And at this point, we ask God to forgive us. Oh Lord Jesus. Yes, oh Lord. Oh Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. realize that our sins are destroying our lives and take away our joy. Lord, we don't want sin to take control of our lives. Amen. We want to face it. We want to become aware of our sins. Lord Jesus, help us to be, to repent of our sins. Lord Jesus, we need you. Oh, Jesus loves me. Jesus, forgives me, oh Jesus, set my spirit free, set my spirit free, Jesus, set my spirit free. From all sins, yes. Lord Jesus, by the help from yes. God, we can overcome all sins. Lord Jesus, please wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> wash us clean. Move your hand over your head and your body. Wash me clean. Wash me clean. I'm clean now. I'm clean now. I'm clean now. I'm clean now. Jesus, forgive all my sins. I'm clean now. I'm free now. Hallelujah. I'm free now. Free like a bird. Jesus, forgive me. I don't want to be controlled by sins. Now fly like a bird. Fly like a bird. I'm free now. Hallelujah. Jesus forgive all my sins. Jesus forgive all my sins. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm sorry for my sins. In Jesus' name, all sins go away. All sins go away. Worry go away. Worry go away. Worry go away. Anger go away. Unforgiveness go away. Hallelujah.